Good afternoon and welcome to my video on cubing basics. Today we're going to look and compare four different positions to get a good understanding of cubing actions over the board. So then, let's get started. Now, you might be new to backgammon, you might have been playing for a few weeks, and you might have seen that cube in the center of the board, there it is on 64, and wondered what the heck it is. What is it for? Is it another dice? What do I do with it? How do I use it? Rest assured, we're going to talk about that big dice today, and hopefully by the end of this short lesson, you'll have a better understanding of what it is and how you use it effectively during a backgammon match. Now, at any point within the game, I can take the cube from the center and I can offer it to my opponent. Of course, he can do the same. He can take the cube from the center and offer it to me. Now, by doing that, I turn the cube to two and I present the cube on my opponent's side of the board. And he can then decide to take the cube or pass it. If my opponent decided to take the cube on two, we are playing for double the stakes. So we are playing for two points rather than one point, or for two pounds rather than one pound. Now, there are different ways to win points in backgammon, which we will talk about before we go any further. Now, there is a single game, which is one point, which means both sides have taken checkers off. There is a two-point game, which is called a gammon, where only one player has taken checkers off and the other player hasn't taken any checkers off the board. And there is finally a backgammon of three points, which means I've taken all my checkers off, but you haven't taken off any checkers and you still have a checker or, what, or more on the bar or in my home board. So a single game is one point, a gammon is two points, a backgammon is three points, and these points are times the value of the cube. So if I've offered you the cube on two, and you've accepted it, and then I gammon you, or you gammon me, then we would lose four points. If I give you the cube on two, and I'm lucky enough to backgammon you, then I would win six points, which is obviously huge in a match. If we're playing to seven and I win six points, I'm a massive favorite. So then the cube is a weapon. We have to kind of use it st strategically to try to win more points and increase our match lead. There are four different cube actions. There is a no double where the cube remains centered and it has yet to be offered. There is a double pass where I offer you the cube on two, you pass. In that instance, the game would end and I would win one point and then we would start a new game with the cube in the center. There is a double take where I offer you the cube and you take it for two points. Now at any point within that game, you can offer the cube back to me on four and then I can turn it again and offer it to you on eight and 16 and so on. Now I'm sure you're familiar that backgammon can swing both ways depending on what you roll. So it's not uncommon for the four cube to be on your side, which is obviously a risk. If you get gammoned on a four cube, you will know that's eight points you're going to lose. The final cube action is too good. What do we mean by too good? Now too good is where the winning percentage gammon rate is high enough that the drop is a given. Now in these cases, it is better withholding the cube and playing for an undoubled gammon rather than turning the cube and only receiving one point. So for example, if my opponent has two or three checkers on the bar 
and it's looking pretty guaranteed that I will take off all my checkers before he's taken off a single one of his checkers, then the gammon, or the backgammon, is guaranteed pretty much. And I should hold on to the cube and just win two points with the cube in the centre. By offering the cube, my opponent will see it as a gift and drop it quickly and be happy to get on with the next game and only lose a point instead of potentially losing two points. So that's what we mean by too good. So now we're going to start by looking at positions. We're going to look at four, and this is the first one. So the cube is currently in the center, and white is deciding on the correct cube action. So what would you do? So remember the four options are no double, double pass, double take, and two goods. Which one of those four would you choose? So here, the correct action is a no double. It would be a mistake here to offer the double. So here, no double, the cube remains centered. Now let's look at the second position. And here, you can see that I've moved one of the checkers into the outfield, one of Green's checkers there. Now what should you do here as white? Now the correct action here to take is a double take. White should offer a double and Green should take. Now why should white double and why should green take? And the best way to understand this is to compare the two positions we've just looked at. So on the left here, we have the no double. And on the second position, we have the double take. Now we can see that here, white is in much more of a threatening position. Because green, because green has an exposed blot, in the outfield, we as white could hit that with various indirect shots, such as 6-1, 6-2, 5-2, and so on. We also, as white, have some devastating doubles, such as double four and double two. In those instances, we could hit both checkers. With double four, we could hit the blot in the outfield and hit the blot on our four point on the other side of the board. So here the cube is justified because of our threat value as white. We also have almost 25% gammons. So really we would like to win more points. We would like to win more money. So we offer the cube hoping to roll well and vastly improve our position. Now green should also take this because it's not guaranteed that we as white would pick up that blot. We have about a one in three chance of hitting that blot in the outfield. So it's not guaranteed that we as white are gonna vastly improve our position. We might miss and then green might hit us or green might cover the blot or make an advanced anchor or do any number of things to improve their position. So green should take and white should double. Let's have a look at the next position. So in his third position, I've moved white's checker from a 23 to a 22 point. So how do you think this changes a cube action? So here it becomes a double pass. White should double and green should pass. Now why is that? Let's compare the positions. So on the left you have a double take and on the right you have a double pass. Now what's the difference? Now the difference is that on the right white has a direct shot with sixes on green's blot in the outfield. Now here, white has a lot of shots to hit green's blot, a lot more than on the left. A six away shot is 17 numbers. 
So here, white would have 17. It would actually be 16 because double threes are blocked on that side of a board. However, double three is very good on the other side of a board in hitting the blot on the four point. So here, there are 17 shots already, and that's not taken into account the shots from the blot on the 24, the indirect shots as before. So here, white is going to pick up green's blot with over 50% of the rolls. There are 36 rolls in total, and a lot of them are going to be really good rolls for white next time. Now, because white is extremely likely to hit that blot and improve his position, then green should pass this. The chances of gammons are also high at 27%. So here, white has many ways to improve the position and can utilize many of the rolls that are likely to come up once a cube has been offered. So green should just pass. If we look at the final position here, position four, again, what is the correct cube action for white and why? So here, the correct action is too good. Remember that we said here, it would be a mistake to offer the cube because a gammon is almost guaranteed. Green already has two checkers trapped beyond uh, a five prime, behind the five prime. And also that might become three checkers if white um, picks up that one in the outfield. So here, white's chances of winning a gammon, getting all his checkers off before green has got one off, are very high. 31%. So almost one in three, white will win a gammon. So by offering the cube, green would drop and white would only win one point when he could have withheld the cube and played on for an undoubled gammon. Now, if we look at positions three and four, you can see there the difference between the double pass and too good. The winning chances go from 69.9% to 78.2%. So there's almost a 10% increase in winning chances. And the gammons also go up from 27 to 31%. Usually we say that in a money game, you need 25% to take. You need to win one in four games. And here, green has only got 21.8% on the right. So it would be a huge mistake for green to take the cube. You could say that on the left, well, green has 30%. You know, isn't that a take? And it's not simply because the gammon rate is so high at 27% that green can just give up the cube and lose one point rather than taking the cube and potentially losing four points if gammoned, which is a big swing in a match. If we compare the four positions together here, we can see top left, no double take, top right, double take, double pass in the bottom left, and too good to double number four. So they are the four different cube decisions. And if you look at the winning chances, they increase between each cube action. So they go from 63 to 68 to 69 to 78. And you can compare these four to see what cube action you should make over the board. If you have strong threat value, then it's usually a good idea to cube because you might be able to vastly improve your position afterwards. Now, I recommend reading Cube Like a Boss by Mark Olson. Very good book on many, many cube positions. Um, and it's really good to go onto XG and to compare different ones. Um, have fun over the board. Take photos when you're playing of cube decisions and then show more experienced players or ask me in the chat and I'll do my best to help you out. 
So I hope you enjoyed my video on cubing. This is just basics. If you want something more complex, check out my other video on the Met and Neil's numbers that takes cubing to an advanced level. But this is a good starting point and something that will definitely improve your game and your cube action. So happy cubing. See you next time. Bye bye.